I'm Tammy Harrison and welcome to Mix. Today we are in Encino, California in an upscale strip mall where there is more than meets the eye. Here you will find a food and cocktail paradise run by an absolute dream team of a husband and wife. Let's go check out Scratch Bar and Kitchen and Woodley Proper. So I'm with Philip now in the kitchen. Tell me a little bit about Scratch Bar and Kitchen. How did sure. you and your wife, Margarita, come up with this, with this concept? At Scratch Bar and Kitchen, we've designed a dining experience more so than just dinner. You know, you start in there at the bar where you are served two complimentary cocktails and five snacks. That's inside of Scratch Bar. I mean, snacks uh, makes it sound like, you know, you're getting some popcorn or something. You get like You do get popcorn. End. You do, you get, do popcorn. get popcorn. Whoops. The idea here is that we don't serve anything we don't make from scratch. From the cheese and charcuterie that you're serving as a snack that's accompanied with margarita's sourdough to the soy sauce in the, in the tuna tartare, uh, we make all those things in the restaurant. So at the end of the day, you know, we're talking about roughly 21 to 25 course tasting menu. Everything cooked over hardwood here in the hearth and served to you directly from the person who made it. All right, I'm with Ben. Now, Ben, actually, yep. a little birdie has told me yes. that you are a magician. I am, and that's why on Monday nights here, uh, right next door, hidden at Scratch Bar, is an unofficial extension of the Magic Castle called Magic Bar. Ooh. Yeah, it's like a little Disneyland over in this place. Yeah. yeah. A little Epcot. It's a little Epcot. Yeah, different worlds. You can kind of do a drinking around the world here, too. Are we going to be making some magic today? Oh, we're making some serious magic today. Yeah, because this looks like a magical contraption. It is a magical contraption. Actually, this is a uh, Belgian coffee maker. This is kind of the way ah. they would make, the aristocracy would make coffee at the turn of the century. But we're not using it for coffee today. We're not? No, today we're going to infuse some gin. We're making booze. Which you could also have in the morning. It just depends on what kind of day you want to have. I just think it's funny how somebody found out that they, out of their coffee machine, can do that. Yeah. People have put booze into uh, contraptions of all sorts I since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to see this one? Absolutely. All right, let's, let's play get, with it. Let's get to All right, diffusing. two chambers. Let's get diffusing. We're basically making kind of an instant moonshine here. In this chamber here, the glass is kind of brass and glass. That's how I refer to it. Okay. I'm going to put a little Thai basil. Mm -hmm. Thai basil is just a little yeah, more flavorful. Yeah, I can smell it from here. It's, yeah. it's delicious. I'm it also going to take a, a scoop of maple sugar. It's not brown sugar, maple sugar. So basically, if you just take a high quality maple syrup on the stove top and just keep cooking it and cooking it and cooking it, it basically becomes a candy. Mm -hmm. Take it off the heat and just start stirring. It'll crumble in on itself, dry out, become maple sugar. Nice. That goes into that. Never end. gonna do that. Yeah, I'm never gonna really do it at just home either. Just gonna buy it. Yeah, you could buy it. <laughs> On this end here, this is the copper chamber. That's for the booze. Uh -huh. The booze in question being? What kind of booze are we using? We're using gin. I like a Sipsmith gin. It's from London. Familiar? Oh, the old Sipsmith. Yeah, the old Sipsmith. No, never heard of it. No? No. Eh, it gets the job done. I'm going to pour it into this copper chamber here, okay. just like that. Now, the cool oh, thing about like this. it's like a weight thing. Exactly. It's kind ah. of counterbalanced here. So what ends up happening is uh, the weight ends up taking it this way. So the whole point is as we heat it up and I light it, it's gonna heat up the gin until it evaporates, it turns to steam. The steam has nowhere to go though, so it's not gonna lose any alcohol content. So as it evaporates, cause it's heating up here, it recondenses into its liquid form on this end. Huh? The liquid will fill up here. It's gonna take in all the flavors of that Thai basil and that maple sugar. What ends up happening is it creates a vacuum in here. It's science. The vacuum then, as I tip it, it's gonna suck it all back into there. There's a spigot on this end. I'm gonna open that up yeah. and pour it over a mojito granita, which is like a mojito ice. So how many hours does this take? Uh, it's about 14 hours. So if somebody no. orders this in the bar, you like, uh... No, so, so the way it works here, it doesn't take that long. This is gonna take about four minutes. The idea of this drink is that it's served along with some other pairings that we do here at Scratch Bar and Kitchen. Ah. So as you're having your first few courses, this is brought out on on the counter in front of you. In the meantime. You. In the meantime, this science experiment is happening here, uh -huh. and you'll basically uh, kind of get to see the, uh, the action happen. When it does happen, and it will, this whole thing will tip. You're gonna watch kind of the amazingness of science in action. I'm waiting for it to move. I know, I know. We could just sit here and just watch. Here 
Here it is. The magic of science and thermodynamics. Oh, it's moving. Wait for it. Wait for this it. Is pretty it's oh, all worth and, that moment. I mean, that was pretty cool. Thank you. It's not done yet. Wait for it. I was it. gonna say, that's it. So wow. this is steeping the flavors of that maple sugar mm -hmm. and that Thai basil in there. I'm just gonna give it a second. It doesn't need that much because that Thai basil is pretty strong. Now, tip it this way. Okay. Watch the liquid level in there. A vacuum has been created in the copper chamber here. So that vacuum basically is gonna pull all that liquid back in. Oh, yeah. Ooh. And that's magic, ladies and gentlemen. And that's gentlemen. magic. So now I release the valve on top to release the air pressure. Right here, this is a soapstone glass. We keep this frozen. In the bottom of it is a mojito granita, which okay. is a frozen mojito ice. Okay. I take that, I put it under this little spigot here, and I pour the hot, it's kind of the, the uh, hot meets cold there in this glass. And then all I'm gonna do is help it along here. I'm just gonna break up that mojito that's been sitting in the bottom there. So you don't need to strain this, or you drink it out of that? You're gonna drink it out of this. Bottoms up. This is probably the most interesting, strangest drink. It's pretty weird. Even though it's the most simplest, because it's just super simple, but the process is gin with yeah. basil. But the way that it's been made, so this is going to be very exciting. Cheers. Cheers. It smells really yummy. Oh, yum. Not bad, huh? This is good. I know it is. That is good stuff. Uh -huh. It was definitely worth the wait. Mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna need another one. It's gone. Yeah. Cheers, yummy. I'm dead. All right, let's do another one. All right. And now I can't wait to taste some of this. Yeah, so this what is- What are you gonna be making for me? This is actually the very first course on our tasting menu. Okay. This is Tasmanian ocean trout. It's beautiful. And what we do with this fish is we compress it in a vacuum machine three times. And what we're doing as we compress it is we're pulling out the excess moisture and firming up the flesh of the fish. You can feel it's got kind of like a, a tackiness to it. Um, we've pulled out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we've pulled out the moisture. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so what we do here is after we sashimi these, we just lay these on here. And then I'm going to use a little bit of cherries that we've marinated with a little bit of shallot and sweetness. So it's got a little tang and a little sweetness. Exactly. like it. So this here is brisola. This ah. is a air-cured New York strip. Mm -hmm. We make this and we actually serve it as one of the snacks in the bar. After that, we take it in and we dry it out and fry it crispy. So Ooh. you have a little bit of uh, surf and turf, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit of meatiness to mm -hmm. it. This here is uh, Thai basil. Mm. Um, and so, again, we've made this nice and crispy. This is a, it's, oh, for, for all intents and purposes, a very crispy dish. And here we have a little bit of kale. Mm -hmm. Again, nice and crisp. It's for the healthy people here in LA. Exactly. Need if you're your healthy, kale. we just deep fry some kale for deep, you. Just deep fry the kale. <laughs> we put a couple pieces of each of these on here. Already looks like a piece of art. And then this is freshly cured smelt row. Again, to add just a little bit of oceanic flavor, a little bit of, of fishiness. And then some fresh hibiscus flowers. Mm. It's very important that everything on this plate is not here for solely aesthetic purposes, mm -hmm. uh, but first and foremost, it has to be here for the flavor. And if the flavor works, the uh, component will work as well. It's beautiful. I don't even. I don't want to eat it because it looks so. You don't have to. I so can eat pretty. it. So pretty. No, I'm definitely going to eat it. So. <laughs> I was just being polite. So do you guys swap up the menu quite often, or is it a seasonal thing, or? Yeah, well, I, last year we actually changed the entire menu every single month on the first, all 20-something courses. Uh, wow. This year we have decided to That's regain our sanity and not do that. But we're changing about a dish a week or so, definitely mm -hmm. seasonally, and really as often as we feel like we don't want to make it anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, we only have 24 seats in the restaurant, so the amount of people that are coming in, we're not feeding two, 300 people a day, and we're not necessarily a restaurant that you eat at two or three times a week. So, you know, our average guest is coming in four, maybe five times a year. Yeah. So we like to keep the menu in a constant state of evolution, but we're not just changing the menu on a whim. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So at this point, this is the Tasmanian ocean trout. All right. And so the last thing that I would do is I would bring this out to you and I would pour a wild mushroom and citrus dashi for you. Okay. And what is a dashi? In American cuisine, in French cuisine, we have chicken stock, we have veal stock. Mm -hmm. The Japanese use dashi. That is their kind of base for everything liquid. Okay. It's mainly, the staples are kombu, mm -hmm. uh, which is seaweed, mm -hmm. dried seaweed and kelp, as well as bonito. 
Okay. Um, so a little bit of dried and cured fish flakes. Oh. Uh, you boil that in water, and that's sort of your staple kind of basic dashi. Okay. Uh, but to this, we've added wild mushrooms and some citrus as well. Oh, so it brings that kind of like an umami flavor all exactly. together. Okay. So for this, I'll oh. recommend a fork. No chopsticks, huh? No chopsticks. And maybe a spoon to get some of those juices well, out yeah. of there. Yeah, then maybe I'll scoop it on. Go for it. All right, here it goes. Yummy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is, del oh my God, this is delicious. It's a cool texture, right? Everything is amazing. I don't even know what to say, I'm a bit speechless, really, because it's actually it's really, really good. These flavors, it, it looks so beautiful, but they all fit. The, the, the crunch, the acidity, the sweetness from the cherry, everything, brilliant. Brilliant. I'm glad you like it. Mm hmm I'm not getting any of this stuff. <laughs> this is all mine. Yeah, short ribs. I'm Dave Shaw, chef of Woodley Proper, a place where you're gonna get great craft cocktails, classic gastropub style food. Like our sister restaurant, Scratch Bar and Kitchen, we do make everything from scratch in-house, from our bread and butter to all of our sauces. Nothing that you get here is gonna come from a can, from a box, it's all made in-house. Uh, we have a great margarita pizza, an amazing award-winning burger, lamb neck tacos. We pretty much got something for everybody. The so Woodley Proper, definitely the place. You come after work, unwind with a, an amazing craft cocktail, some amazing food, great friends, great atmosphere, and just have yourself a wonderful time. So we are now at Woodley Proper with Rui. And you're gonna mix up something now. What yeah. are you gonna mix up? What we're gonna make tonight is uh, the Vukare. Uh, it's kind of like this illegitimate love child of three really great classics that we put together. Uh, it's gonna be a little mix of a Manhattan, uh, an Old Fashioned, and a Cesarac. Sounds delightful. Yeah. What do we need? So we're gonna start with a little bit of Angostura bitters. Okay. Uh, we keep all of our bitters in these nice little droppers just so it's a little more consistent. Right. You add a little bit to anything, it'll make it taste good. Okay. Uh, so these are Peychaud's bitters. Creole style bitters, a little bit of anise, a little bit of uh, vanilla, some licorice to Ooh, it. Let me smell. Oh yeah, this is wonderful. You can carry on, but let me smell. Mm -hmm. So to kind of add to that, we're gonna add a little bit of this French liqueur called Benedictine. It smells nice. It's a French herbal liqueur. Mm -hmm. Again, that Peychaud's bitter, they just go together really yeah. well. And then for that Manhattan part of it, we're gonna add some French sweet vermouth. Now we're gonna start with the hard stuff. Pierre Ferrand, 1840. Really beautiful cognac, we love this stuff here. Oh, no, two, no, not two ounces of that. Oh no, just one. The second one comes from this guy. Weak drink. Oh, Old okay. Overhaul. Oh, it's more. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh there's more. Uh, so this is Old Overhaul rye. Really classic rye whiskey. Uh, again, we love this stuff. We use it in just about everything. What is it, Over what? Old Overhaul. Really old, old, old stuff. At one point, it was actually sold as medicine, uh, which I guess I can you can imagine. still call that nowadays, think, right? Yeah, grandpa's, isn't it? Yeah. Grandpa's medicine? Then yeah, that's, uh, that's it for the booze. We're gonna add a little bit of ice. Okay. Uh, and then we're gonna stir this bad boy. We're just gonna, you know, bring it down a little bit and also dilute a little bit of water into it. And chilled. And chilled, of course. Now, to finish it off, uh, we always kind of under stir it a little bit. We wanna make sure the guest has a drink that's balanced throughout their whole drinking experience. So because of that, we're gonna add one big ice cube. Again, it's not gonna dilute a drink. It's gonna keep it cold throughout your whole drinking experience. Okay. And we're just gonna kind of pour that right over it very slowly. So if you measure this correctly. Mm-hmm. I you hope did. so. Perfect. Nice. You're hired. I get to keep my job. You can keep your job. Uh, and then to finish off, we're gonna express a little bit of orange oils into it. We don't tend to garnish our drinks too much. We keep it very simple, very tasty. And we feel that just this is enough to kind of make it really, really beautiful. There you have it, Avukare. Ooh, all right. Enjoy. Cheers, everybody. It smells good. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ugh. No, I'm kidding. It's oh, really good. Break my heart. It's really good. Yeah. It's very delicious. It is a, like it's a little fruity, sweet. Yep. Medicinal. Yeah. Definitely medicinal. Yeah. Smooth. Very smooth. Super smooth. Very smooth. Doesn't burn um, on the way down at all. Absolutely not. And it's you know. very good. And it's got a really nice aftertaste too. Yeah. Very, very kind of refreshing actually. Yeah. Weirdly enough, you know, the drinks enough. can be uh, refreshing. Right. Yeah. Cheers, everyone. All right, well, let's get to more eating. So this is very simple. 
Uh, this is a vegetable course, this is a leek. So what we've done is we've taken a whole leek and all we did it looks charred. It has been charred quite a bit. So we okay. put it into the fire uh -huh. this morning. We let it sit there all day. You can oh. see on the back and the outside of this is completely pitch black. Yeah. So what happens is as this chars, it starts to dehydrate almost a little bit and soften and also sweeten up the interior. And then this here is a sabillon of bone marrow and basil. Okay. This is a sauce that we have whipped in at a specific temperature, eggs and that's what gives it its viscosity. Okay. If you just had all the components in here without the eggs, it would have the texture of liquid. Okay, yeah, of course. Cool. At this point, we've covered it with a little bit of bone marrow and basil. Mm hmm And I'm going to use, uh, oh. careful, <laughs> uh, a blowtorch. Uh, Love how you warned me about that one. Because there's egg, this will caramelize. Plus the log gets it. You get that smoky flavor. I know, it's good. So on top of this, we're gonna do just a little bit of lemon, mm -hmm. as well as some sea salt that we import from Bali. Why from Bali? Uh, it's my favorite. You wanna try some? Sure. I mean, I've never just eaten salt out. Yeah, of it's thing. sweet. Oh, it's really? sweet and it's it's got like a nice crunch to it. Mmm. Right. That and some chips would be good, wouldn't it? Then what we've done is we've taken all of the excess leek tops and greens. Mm -hmm cryo-blanched it in liquid nitrogen uh, and then pulverized it into a powder so that we can cover this in more leek flavor. And then to finish this, to accompany the basil that's on there, these are basil blossoms, basil buds. You guys love your flowers, huh? We do, they're very pretty. They're also very, very fragrant and very delicious. Again, it's not about aesthetics, although aesthetics are important. Uh, it's about what it actually does to the dish. Well, I should keep my, I have basil plants at home. I've never thought of actually keeping the buds. Well, you shouldn't, you should just bring them to me. True. BYO, we'll exchange trade. Exchange program. Exchange, yeah, the basil exchange program. <laughs> the basil exchange program. So at this point, this is the dish. And the way you go about eating this is you actually scoop it out of the shell, in a sense, or you kind of cut it down the I'm middle. do that. Exactly, and it'll come right out. All right, ready? I'm ready. Ready, set. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay. Mm-hmm. But you're right about the lemon. That was, that was the right amount. The nice acidity in it as well. Really delicious. It's kind of fun because in, in the menu, you're getting a lot of high-end exotic ingredients, and then the next thing we give you is just a, a, a burnt vegetable. A burnt vegetable. <laughs> I want more burnt vegetables from you, Philip. <laughs> burnt vegetables all day. All right, I'm with Peyton and we are going to mix up something. Yes, indeed. What are we making? We like to call this the pioneer. After all of those- Pioneers. Indeed, yes, after pioneers going west, uh, uh, <laughs> often time, I'll give you this. Cherry maple syrup. What I do here is just a super light drizzle right around the very corner of the glass. You don't want too much, because eventually the we're gonna be using this glass the, to capture the, some smoke. Yeah. Okay. Right, oh yeah, that's great right there. Just that, that's yeah. it? Now, if you want to give that a little stir around, really coat the, the corners of that glass. We don't want too, too much in there, because like uh, we're going to be catching some fire inside that glass. Perfect. Ooh. I've got What's a that? couple of cloves for you. Oh, I love cloves. We're going to be torching these guys here. So I'll hand that over to it's you. It's going to smell nice in here. Oh, yeah. There you go. Excellent. How's that? Perfect. Huh? Yeah, now go ahead. Just torch till your heart's content. Get a okay. nice little fire going in there. Oh, yeah. Keep Are going. Are supposed to? Oh, yeah. Yeah. More? Definitely. Perfect, perfect. Oh, that smells so good. And... So here we are, we've got some smoke captured in this glass, and now we're gonna build our cocktail uh, body, essentially. So first couple of ingredients, we're gonna do 0.75 ounces of Benedictine. Benedictine? Yeah, right into that mixing glass there. All the way to oh, the Oh, you wanna do it all yes, the way? Yes, indeed. All right, okay. Fine. Perfect. A little smoke bit of out. vermouth here. Always a classic. Indeed, we're gonna also do three quarters of an ounce of that, too. Okay. Almost. Oh, Brilliant. There we go. Next, we're going to do a full one and a half ounces of this High West Double Rye. Uh, I really love this whiskey. It's a, it's a blend of two different rye whiskeys. Mm -hmm. One that's a two-year whiskey. It's very brash, very spicy. Mm. Uh, it's about a 95% rye to 5% barley ratio. Basically, ends up for this beautiful kind of smooth and spicy whiskey that I think goes perfectly into this cocktail. All right. How much of that stuff? Uh, 1.5. All right. All right. Perfect. There you go. Now we're gonna drop a couple of ice cubes in here and do a little bit of a stir. All right, well, you grab that. I got your ice, darling. Okay. 
Only 18 more. <laughs> yes, indeed. We'll be here uh, just another 30 minutes uh -huh. or so. And I give that a nice little stir. All right, so let's take that out of the way. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to pour anything in there anymore, No, right? we are all done. Okay. Our cocktail is built, so to speak. So we're just gonna chill this a little bit Essentially, now. yeah. A nice little chill, <laughs> a bit of a mix. All right, let's chill. Mm-hmm. I'll give you one of these guys. Mm hmm So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna pop our big rock right there on the wood. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a little bit of magic here. Now I'll let you uh, flip that guy up, right side up Will you here. flip it, I'll pull. Oh yeah? All right, yeah. perfect, great. Ready? One, two, three, and we're up and over. Okay. Just a nice, sensible, easy pour right in there. Oh, you, oh, okay, I thought you were gonna take the whole thing off. Oh no, we gotta keep that smoke in there. All right, all right, all right. Can't let the choo-choo get out of the station before we're ready to drink it. Perfect. Oh, now he's got some right jokes, there. huh? Oh, of course. <laughs> now he's... Dad jokes for days. <laughs> now he's got some jokes. All right, Dom, there you are. Okay. All right, let's taste the pioneer. Sounds good. Cheers. Cheers. Smoky goodness. Mm -hmm. Yum. Mm, right. The cloves, yeah. oh my god. You get that clove right in the nose, the spirit really hits, a, hits the mouth first, and mm -hmm. then you get that lovely maraschino molasses uh, finish that just makes everything all nice and easy at the it's end. It's like smoky, sweet, cherry, clovey goodness. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. We only see a certain amount of people every 30 minutes. So when we built the bar, we thought this would be great. It'll be somewhere for people to, like if they show up early or they want to stay late or maybe, you know, we're running behind. Mm -hmm. maybe, we'll give them an option to maybe order something while they're waiting. And then I thought, why would anybody order something before a 20 course tasting menu? No, we're just gonna make them have free drinks and free food before dinner starts. Nice. So that's pretty much how. That's a great how, idea. I thought that would be nice. Absolutely, and that's why it works. <laughs> Benjamin? Yes. What is this? This, keeping in the theme of using coffee makers for everything besides coffee, okay. is a slow drip coffee maker. Uh -huh. So traditionally what you would do is fill this with water, you'd fill this with your coffee grounds in the center chamber, and slowly you would let this drip through the coffee grounds, it would kind of collect all the flavors of that strong coffee down in the uh, bottom chamber, and after four or five or six hours, or however long you wanted it to brew, you'd have a cup of very strong coffee. Mm -hmm. We don't have that time, Tammy. No, and we, we do not. also want booze and yes. not coffee. But what we're gonna do is basically create a very light aperitif cocktail, kind of an appetizer cocktail. So in this top portion, this is non-alcoholic in the top portion. Okay. Hibiscus, we boiled some currants, we've added fresh lemons, and, and essentially created a lemonade. So this oh, yeah. on its own is delicious. Yeah. Through the center chamber here though, dried hibiscus blossoms, super flavorful, and once those get wet, they're gonna really, like a tea, kind yeah. of steep all of that in there. As we've opened this up here, it drips down, it takes in all the flavors of the shot. hibiscus. It's very, very cool. It's very apothecary yeah. feeling to it. You can let this drip slow over the course of the afternoon. The longer you let it drip, basically, the more intense that hibiscus is gonna be. Uh -huh. uh, it's gonna take in all kind of that flavors of that center chamber there, collect at the bottom here. Once it's collected at the bottom there, what I like to do is take a little black currant puree Okay. It's just a simple puree that we make basically as the byproduct of the lemonade. Okay. And I paint the inside of the glass with the black currant puree ah. as if you didn't have enough flavor. Yeah, if there wasn't enough black currant. If there wasn't already. enough. And then we pour that with a little sparkling white wine. Drier the better, we like a brute. Okay. We just evenly pour that. And this is like an aperitif, I'm saying, right? Exactly yeah. right. This just is, this is the first thing that kind of sends you into what we're doing here at Scratch Bar, which is 21 courses all together. So this is just your palate right. cleanse. I'm gonna hand this over to you. Thank you, and what, what is the name of this? This is a Madre d'Agua, so it's named after... Madre d'Agua. I like it, I like the way oh, you say it si, too. Grazie. It's named after a Cuban folklore. There was a creature called the Madre d'Agua. But right. most importantly, it's delicious. Have at it. Alrighty. Cheers. I'm gonna have the, the clown mouth. I love it. With the black currant. Cheers, everybody. This brings you back to childhood. Not, yeah. with, the, not with the alcohol in it. Yeah. But the taste, <laughs> I was gonna say. The taste of the black currant, because there's a drink uh, where I grew up called Ribena. Really? Black currant. This is like the adult version. I like it. 
of, of, uh, of a black current kids drink I used to drink. It's really bold, really rich flavors. Very I think it, it cuts really nicely with the. With I the like fruit. it with the with the paste. Mm -hmm. It's different and it's it emphasizes the the deliciousness of the berry. Is my tongue red? No. Not yet. Okay, it will be mm -hmm. after I slam it's the, this. It's the Kool Aid of aperitifs. Mm -hmm. Cheers. <laughs> with Margarita in the Scratch Bar kitchen, or the Scratch Kitchen. Yes. So today for you, I'm plating our bone marrow desserts. Bone so, marrow yeah, desserts? Yeah, so it's one of five desserts that we have on the tasting menu. Okay. So what we're gonna do here is I pipe the custard in, in the actual marrow. So what I do is I take the raw bone marrow, I roast it, I scoop out the marrow, and then we boil the bones for like six hours so that they are actually the vessel in which you're gonna eat it. So there's bone mar marrow in the custard? Yes, so I whip whip the custard with the roasted bone marrow. Okay. Um, so you have that nice bone marrow flavor in there. And this over here is the pine meringue. Did you come up with this? I did. You did? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, right. so because you're more the pastry chef. Yeah, so I do. And Philip, your husband, is more the savory, savory. executive yeah, yeah, chef, yeah. right? Yeah, so I do all the desserts for all the restaurants. That is the most fantastic <laughs> yeah. combination as a team as Thank well. You. Yeah, I know. It's really fun because we get to, you know, we get to create together and yeah. work together and it's just, it's awesome because we have such different views on food, mm -hmm. so it's just, it just works really well. Well, it's good because it's the same, but it's different. You can take care of the sweet stuff, yeah, he yeah. can do the savory, yeah, and there's exactly. no arguments. Exactly. It's supposed to be, anyway. <laughs> so this is the finished product. It's beautiful. Thank you. On the actual plate, I like to use this rock salt, and then we usually have like a few different herbs, and the last component is actually the parsley chip. I love it. It's a real nice fusion that I don't think I've ever seen anywhere before. Yeah. All right, let's go in. Yeah. All right. Oh, wow. Yum. So, you know, you mm -hmm. get the acid from the pickled grapes, mm. the freshness of the parsley, and then a little bit of like I like the crunch. It's like the crunch from the yeah. meringue. It hits every note. The sweetness, the sourness from the pickling, obviously. Yeah. The crunchiness from the meringue, but also the nice creaminess from the custard. Yeah. And then the aftertaste with the bone marrow. And it's not overpowering, which is really delightful. Thank you. So I'm just going to scoop this last little bit out there. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> mm. All right, everyone, once again, it's a wrap from me. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Until next time, I'm Tammy Harrison. Cheerio. We're gonna use half ounce of our maraschino liqueur. Okay. Um, Take this top off. Oh no, that pours right out of it. Really? Yeah, we're gonna do uh, same amount, half ounce. Half ounce. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is gonna add a little bit of sweetness to it. It's gonna have a little bit okay. of some orange quality to it, a little bit of um, some anise, and a little bit of vanilla. That should be good right there. But there's nothing. Why isn't this coming out? Is this empty? Oh. Nice pause. That is an empty bottle, That's ladies an empty and gentlemen. Bottle. We gotta go fetch one side. I thought you were just gonna keep going. I was like, it's fine. I was like, this no, is nobody really can see. light. Nobody can see. Nobody can see. Okay. Probably turn the torch off, right? Yes. Ooh. Perfect. Ooh. <laughs> gotcha, darling. I did it so easily earlier. Oh, because ah. we were going the wrong way. We were trying to push it back when I was full. <laughs>